Hello, welcome to the Mythology Manifest. For today's video, I am going to be talking about Jason and the Argonauts and their hunt for the Golden Fleece. This is one of my favourite myths and I hope you enjoy it. So, this story begins with Jason's uncle, Peleus, not to be confused with Peleus, who was Achilles' father. This is Peleus, who was the adopted brother of Jason's father, Aeson. Peleus was also a descendant of Poseidon, but he was not favoured by any of the gods because of his anger. When the time came, Peleus wanted to be king of Icolus, which was the city ruled by his adopted family. However, because he was not a blood relative, it was unlikely that he would be allowed to become king. So Peleus decided to take things into his own hands and kill his 49 adoptive siblings. He began a massacre in the Temple of Hera, and this turned the goddess against him completely, which is not something that anybody would have wanted during this time, as Hera was a very angry and vengeful goddess. In anger, she spouted a prophecy, saying that one day a man with only one sandal would return to Icolus and would usurp him and take his throne. Jason's father, Aeson, was killed by Peleus, but Jason and his mother, Polymede, escaped. Polymede took Jason to Chiron, the centaur who trained heroes, and left her son with the half-horse, half-man until he reached the age of 20. During this time, Chiron taught Jason how to fight and told him of the horrific actions of his uncle Peleus. Hearing stories of his horrendous uncles, Jason decided that one day he would return to Icolus and take the throne for himself. When he was 20, Jason did travel back to Icolus, and just before he got to the city, Hera appeared before him, disguised as a mortal old woman. The goddess got him to carry her across a river, and she did this to see if Jason was the hero that she had been waiting for. And surely enough, he was. He was because he helped her, but also because he lost a sandal in the river, meaning that he would enter Icolus with only one sandal on. He stormed into the palace, and Peleus was terrified when he saw Jason with one shoe on, as there was a prophecy that a man with just one shoe would take his throne. Jason demanded that the throne of Icolus be returned to his bloodline, and that he himself become king. Although Peleus was scared of the prophecy, he was also obsessed with power and refused to give it up. He decided to set Jason an impossible task. He said that if Jason could retrieve a magical golden fleece from Colchis, he could have the throne of Icolus. The story of the fleece is actually quite interesting in itself, so I'll just go over that quickly. The fleece came from a golden ram, which had been a gift from Zeus to Jason's ancestor, Phrixus who one day flew it to Colchis, which was known as the land of witches and necromancers, where the king was Aetes. Aetes was the son of the sun titan Helios, and the brother of Pasiphae and Circe, as well as being one of the first ever witches, or warlocks, they had the same name back then. Aetes sacrificed the golden ram and hung the, fle and hung the fleece, which had magical properties, on a tree guarded by a dragon. After that, he refused to ever give it up, because of a prophecy saying that if he ever lost it, he would also lose Colchis. And like all kings in mythology, Aetes was power mad, as well as incredibly violent and filled with rage and bloodlust. Anyway, back to the actual story. Determined to get back the throne of Icolus, Jason agreed to Peleus's quest and gets himself together a set of men, including the legendary Heracles. The other men were called Castor, Polyduces, Euphemus, Perilaminus, Orpheus, Eurytus, Echion, Calais, Zetes, and Mopsus. And together they became known as the Argonauts, because the ship that they travelled in was called the Argo. The ship was actually blessed by Hera and Athena, and even Poseidon, who knew that his son Peleus was not the rightful king of Icolus. On the way to Colchis, Jason and the Argonauts stopped off at the island of Lemnos, which was an island populated only by women, similar to the Amazons. However, these women had previously been married and killed their husbands for abusing them and taken over the island for themselves. Things worked out better for the Argonauts in the way that they weren't killed like the women's husband. In fact, the women of Lemnos did not kill any of them and they stayed a while on the island and helped to repopulate it. Some of the Argonauts even stayed on Lemnos after the others left because they were happy there. 
When the rest of the Argonauts set off on their journey again, the men came across the incredibly thin prophet and king, Phineas, who told them that he would warn them of a coming danger in their path and how to defeat it if they stopped the Harpies, who were winged women sent by Zeus, who stopped him from eating, from eating by stealing his food and never giving it him back. This was a punishment that he had received for blinding his own son. The Argonauts agreed and stood guard, warding off the Harpies with swords, allowing Phineas his first good meal in years. After this, we don't really know if the Harpies ever returned, as it was never written about again. But what was written about was Phineas telling the Argonauts of the danger ahead. The danger was actually clashing rocks, known as the Straits of Bosphorus, which was to the Greeks the edge of the world. He told Jason and his companions that to get past the Straits of Bosphorus, they must first send in a bird and let it be crushed by the rocks. They would then open briefly once again and they would be allowed to sail through. The Argonauts took to the sea again and did exactly as Phineas said. They released a bird into the Straits of Bosphorus and the rocks clashed on it violently. They then separated once again and the Argo, with the help of the gods, sailed through quickly. This then led them very quickly to Colchis, where dragons roamed the sky and magic was everywhere. But not good magic, mostly necromancy, better known as black magic. Something that the gods both feared and disapproved of, especially in the hands of mortals, who they viewed should never have had such power in the first place. When in Colchis, Jason went straight to King Aetes and asked if he could have the Golden Fleece, as it once belonged to his ancestor Phrixus. Aetes said that if Jason could complete yet another quest, then he could have the fleece. Wanting it badly, Jason agreed, even though he was fed up of quests, and asked Aetes what he wanted him to do. The King of Colchis said that if Jason managed to get the Calcatori, or the Bronze Bulls as they were otherwise known, to plough seeds, then he could have the Golden Fleece. Thinking the task sounded easy, Jason acted agreed and accepted an invitation to stay the night in Colchis before facing the bronze bulls in the morning. What nobody knew was that a Colchian princess, the daughter of Aetes and a priestess of the goddess of magic Hecate named Medea had been made to fall in love with Jason by Aphrodite and Eros. This love was strong and bordered on obsessive and Medea became very protective of Jason. She went to him that night and warned him that the bronze bulls were from her grandfather, the sun titan Helios, and that they were actually too hot for human skin to handle, and that if Jason went too close to them, he would surely burn to death. She said that if Jason promised to marry her, then she would give him a magical oil to protect him from them. Jason said that he would marry Medea, and she handed over the magic oil. The next day, Jason rubbed these oils on himself and faced down the bronze bulls. He sowed the, seed, sowed the seeds and had the bulls plough the ground. Aetes had not expected Jason to succeed with the bulls, but he did have a plan B. The seeds that Jason had sown with the bulls grew quickly and became skeleton warriors. Aetes did not want to give up the fleece and sent the skeleton warriors after Jason. Medea used her witchcraft to cloud Jason and quickly they ran to the, to the tree where the fleece hung. Medea used her magic again to put the dragon to sleep and recruited her brother, and together Jason, the Argonauts, Medea and her brother all escaped Colchis. This however did not stop Aetes, as he boarded his ship and went after the Argo. To stop her father, Medea killed her brother and hacked him into pieces, throwing bits into the sea knowing Aetes would have to stop and collect them to give his son the proper burial. The Argonauts made a quick stop at the island of Medea's aunt, Circe, who unknowingly cleansed Medea of her fratricide and kicked them off the island. They made it back to Icolus, and Peleus tried to refuse Jason the throne, so Medea killed him. And so Jason became king of Icolus, and that is where Jason and the Argonauts ends. There is, however, an aftermyth to this tale, which includes Medea, and it also concludes the entire myth. So I'll go through that quickly, but not in detail, as I want to talk about Medea and her actions in my next video in detail. But the people of Icolos were scared of Medea and her witchcraft, and so banished Jason and Medea to Corinth. The king of Corinth 
liked Jason and offered his daughter Glaus to Jason as a wife. By this time, Jason and Medea already had three children and yet he still cheated on Medea. And so she killed Glaus and her own three children before taking their bodies away in a chariot pulled by dragons. This paints Medea in a bad light and I will be discussing that in my next video and trying to convince you that she's not actually as bad as she sounds. As for Jason, he was miserable for years and one day he went to the Argo to reminisce about better times when he had glory and Cleos, when suddenly a beam fell on the bow and hit his head, killing him instantly. And that was the end of Jason. And it also concludes our myth. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment or subscribe. If you would like to show further support, please follow this channel on Twitter. I have left a link to it in the description below. Thanks for helping me keep classics alive. I will see you next time on the Mythology Manifest.